this video about chemical bonding chapter 6 section 1 introduction to chemical bonding what are the objectives of our list to define chemical bonds and what's the meant by chemical bond explain why most atoms form chemical bonds describe ionic and covalent bonding and differentiate between them Explain why most chemical bonding is neither purely ionic nor purely covalent. And finally, classify bonding type according to the electronegativity differences. Let's dive in. What's a chemical bond? Define the chemical bond. As we can see here, these atoms are attracted to each other because of the positive charge of the nucleus and the negative charge of the electron the electrons the positive charge of the first atom attract the negative electrons of the second atom also the positive charge of this atom attract the electrons of the middle atom and so on so the positive also the positive charge of the middle atom attract the electrons of the outer atoms so this electrical attraction between positive and the negative charges form chemical bonds so a mutual electrical attraction between the nuclei and the valence electrons of different atoms valence electrons mean the outermost electrons of the atoms so this is a chemical bond a mutual electrical attraction between the nuclei and the valence electrons of different atoms the question now why atoms are chemically bonded to each other this is because of potential energy individual atoms have higher potential energy and they need to be more stable means they need to decrease their potential energy so by bonding with each other potential energy of the atoms decreases and they become more stable how they perform that atoms form compounds or share in chemical bonding by gaining or losing and this is a type of chemical bonding called ionic bonding or by sharing electrons now let's differentiate between ionic and covalent bonding starting with ionic bonding uh, ionic bonding from its name come from ions so the chemical bonding that results from the electrical attraction between cations and anions cations means positive ions and anions means negative ions let's discuss the cation as you can see here in sodium atom the first level contains two electrons the second level contains eight electrons and the third level which is the outermost energy level contains only one electron because the atomic number of sodium equals 11 two in the first level eight in the second level and one in the third level sodium atom loses this electron to become more stable so it becomes a positive ion or cation and it becomes 28 this is the cation an atom a metal atom loses one or more electrons from outermost energy level 
an ion or negative ion. As you can he see here in chlorine atom, Cl17, atomic number of chlorine is 17. Two electrons in the first energy level, eight electrons in the second energy level, and seven electrons in the outermost energy level, which is the third one, 2A7. Chlorine atom needs one electron to complete its outermost energy level with electron to become eight. So it gains one electron and becomes negative ion. So it becomes 288 and the charge is negative. So when an atom loses an electron, it becomes positive ion. And when it gains an electron, it becomes negative ion. So the ionic bonding, as you can see here, for example, between sodium and the chlorine. Sodium atom loses one electron, and the chlorine atom gains that electron. So sodium becomes positive ion, and the chlorine becomes negative ion, and electrostatic attraction between positive and the negative for ionic bonding between sodium and the chlorine to form sodium chloride. Now, the covalent bonding. In covalent bonding, no gaining, no losing. Just share of electron. So chemical bonding that results from the sharing of electron pair between two atoms. Sharing electrons between two atoms is called covalent bonding. Chemical bonding that results from the sharing of electron pairs between two atoms. Here, for example, two atoms. This is the outermost energy level, by the way. This atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. And the second atom contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. So each atom needs one electron to complete its outermost energy level with electrons. What, what's the case? They each atom share with an electron. This electron from the first atom and this electron from the second atom. These two electrons are called electron pair shared by the two atoms. And the first atom doesn't lose nor gain. And the second atom doesn't lose or gain electrons. These two electrons or electron pair is shared by the two atoms. This is called covalent bonding. How can we know that this bond is covalent or ionic? According to what? Ionic or covalent? This depends on the electronegativity difference between the two atoms. How? As you can see now, if the electronegativity between two atoms equals 3.3, .3, it's purely ionic. If the Electronegativity difference between two atoms equals zero, it's purely covalent. If the electronegativity lies between zero and 3.3, .3, the ionic character decreases from 3.3 to zero. As you move up, the ionic character increases. And as you move down, the ionic character decreases. For example, if the difference between the two atoms equals zero, it's zero percent ionic character. If the difference between the two atoms equals zero point three, it is five percent ionic character. 
if the electronic electronegativity difference between the two atoms 1.7 it is 50 percent ionic character and if it's 3.3 difference in electronegativity it is 100 percent ionic if the difference is between 0 and 0 0.3 it's called non-polar covalent. If the difference lies between 0 0.3 and 1.7, it's polar covalent. If the difference more than 1.7, it is ionic bond. So, the type of bond depends on the difference in electronegativity. Okay, clear? Again, here it's 50% ionic if the electronegativity difference equals 1.7. Less than 50% or the electronegativity difference less than 1.7 the covalent bonding increases and the ionic character decreases more than 1.7 the ionic character increases okay let's discuss an example classify the bonding between sulfur s and the following elements hydrogen what the type of bond between sulfur and hydrogen? Cesium, the type of bond between sulfur and cesium. Selenium, the type of bond between sulfur and selenium. And finally, chlorine, what the type of bond between sulfur and chlorine? If you know that the electronegativities of sulfur, hydrogen, Cesium, selenium, and chlorine are 2.5, 2.1, 0.7, 2.4, and 3.0, respectively. Uh, let's solve it. You have one minute to think about. Solution. The electronegativities of sulfur, hydrogen, cesium, selenium, and chlorine are 2.5, 2.1, 0.7, 2.4, and 3.0 respectively. This is a guide for you. Now, the bonded atoms, electronegativity difference, and the type of bond. Hmm. Here, sulfur and hydrogen. The electronegativity of sulfur is 2.5. Electronegativity of hydrogen, 2.1. 2.5 minus 2.1 equals 0 0.4. 0 0.4 more than 0 0.3, so it is polar covalent between 0 0.3 and zero and 1.7 polar covalent here sulfur and cesium the electronegativity of sulfur 2.5 and the electronegativity of cesium 0 0.7 the difference between them 1.8 between 1.7 and 3.3 .3, it is an ionic bond 
sulfur here is a more electronegative and also sulfur here is a more electronegative because it has higher electronegativity sulfur and selenium electronegativity of sulfur 2.5 electronegativity of selenium 2.4 the difference between them 0.1 so they form non-polar covalent bond and also here sulfur is more electronegative it has higher electronegativity than selenium and finally sulfur and chlorine the electronegativity of chlorine is the highest here equals 3 and the electronegativity of sulfur 2.5 3 minus 2.5 equals 0 0.5 0 0.5 lies between 0 0.3 and 1.7 it is polar covalent and the electronegativity of chlorine is more than the electronegativity of sulfur so the sulfur atom is the more electronegative here clear guys thanks a lot for watching this video